Welcome to our live training session number 45. We're going to be taking a look at how to tune a 2002 Pontiac Firebird using HB Tuner software. Let's jump into some details about this vehicle. We're going to find it has a stock bottom end. The cylinder heads have been replaced with aftermarket 5.3 liter style cylinder heads that have a 64cc combustion chamber. It has a tick performance stage 2 camshaft, an LS6 style intake manifold, and a stock throttle body. Now in addition to this, it has a cold air ram air style intake, TSB long tube headers, and exhaust. It also has 42 pound per hour fuel injectors. And we're going to be tuning this on 93 octane. So we're going to learn how to use our VCM editor software to do our calibration changes, learning how to tune our mass airflow, our speed density style uh, VE tables. We're going to be working with our spark timing, going and learning how to do our idle control, going and taking a look at all different aspects of the calibration process from start to finish. We're going to have a lot to cover, so let's jump into our live training session so we can get started. Welcome to our live training session here with our Pontiac Firebird. Now we just went over all the details that have been done to the vehicle. Let's jump into our HP Tuner's VCM editor software so we can do a read on our PCM and start our calibration process using that file that we're gonna do the read on right now. So moving into the HP Tuner's VCM editor suite, we can find up at the top we have a read icon, a read vehicle icon. So I am in a status right now where I have the ignition key on, the vehicle's powered on, the engine is off. I have my MPVI2 cable plugged into my OBD2 port, and I have a USB cable plugged into my laptop connected to that MPVI2 cable. So I'm ready to do the read process here. Um, that's the first step we need to do before we do any actual tuning. So we want to read the file out of the vehicle so that we can save it, and that we can start to make modifications to that particular file. So I'm going to go up here into the read vehicle, and then we can see this uh, screen pops up here. We're simply going to click our middle uh, button here, says read and we're gonna be doing the read. So this is going to take several minutes, usually two to three, four minutes range to do a read out of our ECM. And once it reads, then we're gonna be saving the file again and learning how to do the file saving structure. We can see the status right now about three minutes, two minutes for that read process to take place. So I'm gonna be patient here, letting it finish the read process as soon as it's finished, then we'll learn how to save the file and then we'll continue on here with the tutorial. Okay, so we can see the read here is almost completed. As soon as it finishes the read, it's going to go and prompt me to save the file. So this is going to be a step we need to pay attention to here. Um, what we're going to find is that we need to go and save it into a folder or into a location on your computer. So in my document section, I have an HP Tuners folder that's been uh, auto-installed from when I installed the software, the HP Tuners VCM suite. So we'll go here into our HP Tuners folder, and then we're going to have logs and tunes, and we can see custom tunes and samples. I'm going to create a new folder in here and save this file as the original. It's always important that you save the file as original so that you have a basis that you can go flash back to. So whether the car is stock and you want to save the original file out of the car, or if it's modified, maybe it's been tuned by another tuner, you want to save that so you can use it for reference sake. Now you're going to go in and change everything and actually do the calibration process, but it's always good to save the original just as a, a kind of a, a good practice when you get, get started with your calibration and doing your tuning. Um, doesn't matter if it's your own car or a customer's car or a friend's car, always save the original file. So what I'm going to do is go into new folder and create a new folder here called EPA and we'll go Pontiac Firebird. And then within the folder, I'm going to save this as the original. So we're just going to call this original. Now, when I save this, we can see that the file saved up here at the top. What I'm going to do is go to file and save as, I'm going to save this again as a different file name. Now this is important that we save it as a different file name so that if we're going in and making our changes, we're not over saving on top of the original. We want the original to be able to revert back. Um, let's just say if we want to put back the stock, we don't want to have to undo all of the editing changes we've made along the way. We want to have files saved separately. So that's what we're going to do right now. And I can call this almost anything I'd want. So let's just call it uh, by today's date. Let's do 420. 20, and then we'll do Rev 1. Um, we can call this Dino Base Calibration 1, uh, whatever you want. Whatever it's going to be, whatever file naming you feel comfortable with, you can go and save it as. So I'm going to go here and just save this right now. We can see that file is saved up here. Now, the next step here is going to go in and take a look at all of the different, different areas here, these different tabs we have to work with and to make our changes to. So we need to first jump into our operating system and start to decide what we want to do for operating system on this. So right now, it's running on the factory GM operating system. We're able to use the real-time tuning enhanced operating system, um, even if we're just in this one bar kind of stock naturally aspirated state that this engine is going to be operating in. We have that option right here, speed density enhanced. We also have a one bar math enhanced. 
So either of these two are going to apply to this situation. Now we do also have our speed density two bar and three bar options that you could choose. Now you want to have in, the, in these situations, you, you want to go and have a two bar or three bar map sensor. You can still run a two bar or a three bar operating system with a stock map sensor programming. So we have a one bar map sensor now stock and that's what we're referencing here if we're using our first two files here, the first file and last file I should say. So this would be a speed density enhanced um, one bar operating system. This is a one bar map. So either of these two in this situation would work. But if we plan on going into a force induction application, let's say we're going to plan on doing supercharged or turbocharged down the road, and right now you're just tuning it naturally aspirated, you can choose two bar, three bar. That's going to give you a two bar, three bar scaled volumetric efficiency table for speed density operation. You still can tune it with a one bar map sensor, and you can still go in and tune out um, essentially just the one bar area of the table. The other uh, bar of operation would essentially be ignored if you're in a naturally aspirated state. So the reason why you might want to choose that is that once you apply the patch here, once you apply any of these patches, you're going to find that you have to save it as a different file name. Um, if you don't save it, uh, don't give, your, give yourself a way to step backwards, this patch has already been applied and then you're going to be stuck having to run that patch. So for example, if I go and apply this one bar operating system patch right now and I want to go supercharge or turbocharge down the road and then I would need a two bar or three bar, let's say I've done all the tuning on my one bar patch here, I wouldn't be able to go back in and change it to a two bar or three bar. Once you apply the patch, it's going to be applied and that's it. You're not going to be able to go back and revert it back unless you save the file in segments just as we found here. So right now I've saved it as this uh, 42020 Rev1. So if I go and apply my patch here, let's just go to the speed density operating system. Let's, apply, let's say apply code modification. It's going to give us some specific directions here. We need to save the file. We need to then go and close the current file, then open the new file, and then we're going to be using the write entire process, which is super important at the end of the video here. We'll write the file to the ECU. We can't just do the normal write process um, when we're flashing the ECU or else it's not going to take right and we're going to have issues. So let's just follow along with these instructions. Since I've applied that one bar enhanced operating patch, we can see that the operating system right here is dropped out. We don't see anything uh, able to be clicked in the file. I'm going to go to file. I'll save that. So we need to go and save it as a new file name. Uh, Thanks for checking out our teaser clip. If you want to see the rest of this video and more than 500 hours of current EFI training we have to offer, make sure you click right here. If you want to go and check out more teaser clips from this training course, click here. And you don't want to miss any of the videos we're going to be releasing on this channel, so make sure you subscribe and click here. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys later.